Hey everybody, welcome to another photo book critique. If you're not familiar with this series, this is the series where I go through a photo book and look at it through the eyes of a photographer, not through a fan. And this time we have Yamaguchi Maho's photo book, her first photo book, and honestly, I've been really excited about seeing this. And looking through the images already, I can say it's something that's really great. And I'm looking forward to you guys watching the video and finding out why I like it. So without further ado, here is Yamaguchi Maho's photo book critique. So we start off with the front cover right here and honestly it's pretty simple it's more of a portrait of her so people know exactly what they're buying when they see this there's no real theme to it so it kind of I guess in that way gives a theme to the whole photo book that there's no theme it's just about her and in the back we can see a preview image of one of the sets that are inside with this flower and with these overalls inside I don't think this is the best shot but I think it really works with this over here, so maybe they had that in mind. And then looking at the insect cover, we can see that it's actually her laying down. In sort of like a weird position, this is really like fetal position with the arms stretched out. You can tell this is a wide angle, because look how skinny her arms look. So <laughs> that's something to be aware of when you're shooting in wide angle. So now when we open up to the very first page, we see that it's this image right here and I've always said the first image really sets the line for the photo book and it should be one of your best one if not your best image. And this one doesn't really speak the best to me but it does give a more general fun vibe that's going to happen in the photo book. We move on to some more simple portraits over here of Maho and really it's all through the set. It's more of simple images except for this one right here which is a little bit more dynamic especially with the shape of the body, this S curve that's going on over here. The arm being straight isn't my favorite, but I don't really hate it. And this environment isn't, like, it wouldn't be my top pick for a photo shoot, but I guess it'll do. You kind of see, like, a lot of the detail back here, which you can see was intentional, because looking at this one over here, you can see how shallow it is. Not a big fan of these white borders over here, though. And another thing I'm not a huge, huge fan of is these two images right here where they're next to each other and it's almost the same thing. I feel like maybe just this one by itself would have been nice. Like this shows a lot of personality while this one kind of feels like just an add-on on there. And again, another one of not my favorites is this one right here where it's four of them in the same page. Again, this could work if you have a close-up of maybe the hand and the letters and then one of her jumping. But having it sort of like this kind of makes it like, okay, this could have been a video and this is more of a photo book. Next we move on to this image right here and I have to say I really like the lighting and the reason why this works in lighting is because of the soft light that's being created thanks to the reflection of the actual floor. Using the floor they're actually able to reflect some lights back onto her face making it look softer because as we see right here on the lips, we can see that it's a little bit sharp but it seems like maybe they diffused it a little bit. Or maybe, you know, it's coming from a big opening or something like that. Jumping over, we see that we have the eating photos, which are a necessity for photo books, it seems. And there's more of this one where it's multiple things at the same time, but they do it a little bit different. They have the drinking, they have the eating, and they have different stages of it. Instead of like a stage of a jump, which is like in one second, this is like stage over like a couple of minutes, which is a little bit better in my book. I kind of wish that it was maybe like just two since we have this one right here and then we have one of the drinking one or maybe like the drinking one over here and one of her enjoying it like maybe this one or maybe this one over here. Now you have this image right here which is one of my favorites from the photo book. I feel like if this was shot medium format this image would turn out so great because of the fact that medium format is able to capture this type of scene very well and I feel like with it it'd be able to just like make this image just pop even more. But as it is right now, I do enjoy this image. All the darks and the lights are in there. You can see this really dynamic in there. Her posing and everything, the way her face is. I think the way her face is in the environment really says a lot with this. And I think just her modeling in general is great throughout this. Just like in this example over here. Even though I don't like this whole thing over here, um, I do enjoy her posing in her face. And also, one note that you might not exactly see firsthand is the actual hair 
moving just a little bit or that might be the styling. I feel like that adds really a lot and makes it really dynamic. Though contrast the next page, I really like the posing she's doing with her face. But I feel like the whole scene in general, I'm not really digging. Like, they're kind of going for the distressed look, but I feel like they didn't think of it originally and they kind of added it in. And I don't think it's really pulled off that well. Real quick for this setup right here, I want to call out this picture because I feel like the makeup, just in the set in general, I feel like this makeup worked really, really well in the couple of pictures there are in this makeup. I feel like it really fits her and I feel like with the mood and this lighting especially, like, it's like supposed to be hotel lighting but at the same time you can tell there was something a little bit more to it i don't know i really enjoy the type of makeup with this lighting i think it's because it's a little bit more harsh and the makeup really complements with it and plus like the styling of the hair not being exactly neat really works well as contrast to the distressed one i talked about earlier i feel like it works much better here next we move on to these over here i have to cover some stuff for youtube but this image i feel like we didn't need um this image is all right, but I feel like if you mix both of them together, I feel like it would have been great. So I feel like at this point, it feels like someone cutting film. This is going to be a weird analogy, but it's like looking through film and then someone's tilting down and this is the top frame and this is the last frame. And then the focus went from the face to the legs and this is like two stills from it. I feel like we needed the still from the middle. I hope that makes sense to someone. And then we move on to this one. This one's a little bit more compact than the other one. But thankfully they were able to separate the legs because one of the problems with really having these compact type of images is that if the legs are together, then it looks like they have one leg or it looks like something's off with their body. Having it separate like this really helps emphasize the fact that they have two legs and gives a little bit more shape into it while still keeping the compact nature thanks to this over here, the pillow I'm imagining and then her kind of covering up. I actually really like the look of this image, even though it's not 100% sharp on her face. I feel like this image really works well. I don't know much about the whole floor with the door hinge right there. I feel like the door hinge is actually a little distracting. If she were to move maybe just a little bit more this way, then it might work a little bit better. But I think the posing here is nice. I think maybe she had maybe just a little bit more of an arch. It'd be a tad bit better, but I think this is awesome. And again, the faces she's able to pull off in these posing, I feel like really works well. This one, again, I feel like this image alone could have worked. I could see how they're trying to be like, oh, she's shying away, but then she looks at you and smile. So in that aspect, I can't see what the photographer or the designer was doing. So I'll let this one slide. These two images actually like together a lot because we have the light versus the dark. But the interesting thing is the face of both of them is actually in shade. This one over here being thanks to her actual hand covering up, helping the shadows not being that harsh on her face and kind of making it so the light doesn't really change her face a lot because that's a lot of the problems with shooting in this type of sunlight. But with her hand covering up, it really complements the light to her face. And then over here, her face being completely in shade because we have the light source in the background kind of fits the theme together with this one being light, this one dark, this one wide, and this one tight. Now this is a really classic example of more of a boudoir type of shoot. And uh, this one is using the shape to the full advantage and showing the curves that Mahohon has. This is thanks to this leg right here being actually bent a little bit, raising up the hips, causing the hips to rise up and the back to lower a little bit, showing more shape in the body. Her pose and the hands aren't really my favorite, but I feel like kind of having that more compact nature is kind of what the photo book is going for lately. And another note, look at all these photos, even though, again, they're all almost the same. If you notice, each face is slightly different, and that's the power of posing in the face. Now, this one right here is one of my favorite images in the photo book, and the reason for it is not only the backlight coming in, it's not only the contrasting black to white, it's really in the posing that she's holding. Like, her legs being cut off so she kind of looks like an amputee really, because it's cutting right at the knees. But, her posing is so strong here and I feel like the wide openness of it with the relaxed hand, it just really gives a lot of power. And I feel like fits really well with especially the face that she has. And everything just circles together so well and I really like this image, even if it's wide and you can see some distortion in the image, I feel like it really works well together. See, in contrast, this one is going for more of the power play, 
but I feel like it's too squished right here where it's a little bit distracting. Like right here we have, you know, the triangles. I always talk about the fashion triangles and posing. And the face is really raised up, giving more power and kind of looking down at you. But I feel like the legs going this way with the arm being right up against the body kind of defeat the purpose of it. And as you can see, it's a little bit close together. There's a little bit of separation, but it still feel like one unit together instead of being more spread out. This one I really like just because of the complementary colors that are together. And again, she's using her shape to her advantage, especially by covering up over here. She's able to arch the back more and hide any more arching from the other side with this big blanket. Now this one, I'm not sure if I like it a lot or if I don't like it. I think what I don't like about it is that everything is sharp and in focus and like these seem like a little bit too bright. But I do like this whole like her inside of this big bush and then her just relaxing kind of in overalls. I don't know, I kind of like the aesthetic of it, but I don't like maybe the, some of the execution to it. Like maybe if those were a little bit darker, then maybe I'd like it a little more. See, look, here's a good example. So in the close up, we see that the colors look fine. You know, everything's exposed well, and this image is exposed well, but when we look at the flowers over here, they seem to be too bright. Like, it might be the fact that there's too many of them kind of making it a hot spot versus this one where it's just in this area and you're focusing mostly on her. In this one, it's all about the environment and then focusing on, on her. And again, this is further emphasized thanks to the white borders over here. In this one, I can see why they use the white over here versus some of the other ones where it doesn't really make sense. Um, in this set over here, we can see the water. Usually the water affects the people in these photo books a lot because the water you know it distorts their body when they're in it but in this one i think it's fine and actually in the next one i think it's actually kind of fine too usually it turns out pretty bad sometimes they do it well like this one is usually a safe one but then right here i feel like since they're at such an angle i feel like it works skipping a couple of pages we have this one right here and this whole set i don't really know how to feel about it i feel like it was kind of thrown together because the wardrobe is like this lacy st stuff and then like this hat over here like her makeup is on point but I feel like this is an ordinary wall anyone has at their home and then it feels like I don't know it might, it might feel a little amateur to me that might be the feeling I'm getting now versus this one now this one is preview so if you want to see the complete one please go ahead and check out I think it's on her Twitter so you can go ahead and check it out but this one I have to cover but this one is the only one of its kind in this photo book. And I really wish there was more of this one because I feel like the simplicity of it really helps, especially with the straw hat and the background being more of a solid color instead of being the bumpy one it was in the other one. And then we have this image right here. I really like this image too. And that's because of the lighting. This is really side lighting, but since she's facing the side, it's able to work out more, kind of really shaping her face. As we can see, we see all the light coming over here and the shadow coming on the nose being a very soft shadow. So this was a pretty big window. And I think this worked out great. This whole set has really great lighting. And then of course her posing is always on point. One thing that I do appreciate is that the blankets are not perfect they're a little bit crumpled up like someone has actually slept there and I think that's a nice touch that not a lot of people do this one is actually a transitional page to the next series where it's more of a nightlife so it was interesting that they included something like this in there and we have this type of nightlife and usually I don't like this type of on-camera flash lighting but I feel like they really did it well here with the slow shutter speed having the slow shutter speed really makes like stuff like this happen a lot of ghosting happen and I feel like this really works well for this image and for the wardrobe that she's actually wearing. I feel like it really fits together and her hair in a ponytail just adds even more to it. But look, even here, this is more of on-camera flash, but I feel like it's actually with purpose. I feel like the background isn't just like overblown or like her face isn't overblown. It's actually well composed. And then they really thought about the posing here. Like they really thought about capturing all the different angles that she has and capturing her feeling which is something rare that I don't usually see in the flash. I usually see it more like a, oh, hey, you know, let's just walk around and take pictures. It's more of a snap versus this one is actually thought out and put together well. Now, this image right here after the night scene, I really don't like this image. Um, the focus is not here. Let's just say the focus is where I'm covering up and I feel like there's no real purpose to it. 
I feel like it's just there to be there. It's kind of like, oh, hey, this shot was there too. You know, fans would like this. Let's put it in. I feel like photography wise, there is absolutely no purpose to it. See, now these two would be a more appropriate ones for the actual waking up after in a sense. This one being really close up. This one you could tell was more of a wide angle lens thanks to the shoulder being really small in the background and it capturing side to side of the room because when you're at a wide angle, you're able to capture more of the background versus a more tight lens which you capture less of the background. Now for this one, I don't know if we needed all five of these images. I feel like one would have been just enough or maybe like one other one, maybe her smiling. I don't know, maybe a contrasting of emotion, but I feel like one should have been done. This is actually more of a fun kind of mood to it. It isn't exactly like, oh, look at me. Uh, but in this case, I do have to cover it up because of YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy the general vibe of this one for sure. Also, one note, this pose is really interesting. I haven't really seen this pose done much before, but I think it's really interesting. I think this could work out in other poses too. Actually, it's actually pretty interesting. I think I'll take note of this one. And we have this one over here, the classic boudoir kind of pose of standing up against the wall. This is really helpful with arching your back, sticking your butt out a little, separating the legs. Look, this is all lines up. Only thing is maybe the arm, again, may, it might be to cover up the extension, but I feel like it's Mahon, so she'll be good. And really, this is like just a simple, you know, easy to go to, and you know it's gonna be good. We have some more on-camera flash. I don't really like because it's so close to a background. I feel like that's maybe the thing I don't like about some of them is that it's so close to the background and it's a little bit distracting. Like, look at this light over here. It's a little distracting. It might give more of that like voyeuristic feel, but maybe I'm just not a fan of that kind of feel in these photo books. And after an interview and a Q&A with Mahon, which spans like four to six pages, I forget how much it is, we have this image right here, which kind of is a sunset image, kind of helps us lead off of the photo book, kind of as a finisher. And this one's pretty nice. I mean, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, maybe if this horizon line was a little straight and it wasn't cutting off at her neck, it would be a little bit stronger, but again, not bad. This image right here, I really like, uh, although I don't like the white borders around it. I know it's kind of like a window portrait kind of thing, but I feel like this would have been stronger full up, especially next to this dark image over here. Or maybe that's what was distracting about it. Maybe when they stretched this out, it was too dark next to each other and too similar. That was a little bit distracting, so they went with this. But in that case, I'd rather stick with this image than with this image. I don't know, for me, it's a little bit more dramatic and it really appeals to me a little bit more. And after a written message by Mahohon, we have this final image over here to finish off the photo book. And it's this image right here with her walking across the water. More of a wide shot. Again, the horizon is a little crooked. But I feel like this image is okay to go out on, but it's not the best. Maybe that one with the hair in the face would have been a little bit stronger if you wanted to go more of a dynamic look to it. And that does it. So that is Yamaguchi Maho's first photo book. I thought in general it was really good. There's a lot of images I didn't show that I thought were really great that go along really with the sets. Some of them would be too much trouble to cover up. So what I recommend for you guys to do is actually go and pick up this photo book because it's honestly so much better looking at it in person than looking at it at like online at scans or anything like that because when you actually see it in person you get to flip to the next page and see the reveal you get to see the pages right next to each other where they're ideally supposed to be and honestly it's a lot about the experience with these photo books and a lot with the photos and I feel like if you get the quality of the print plus the quality of the design and the pages next to each other then it really just completes the package of Yamaguchi Maho's greatness in modeling as we can see in this photo book. And don't forget that the photographer did a really great job with this photo book. And I think overall everyone worked really hard on this. The makeup was on point, wardrobe was on point, photography, modeling. Everything was really cool and honestly this is a pretty great photo book. If you have not picked it up already I definitely recommend it and checking it out for yourself. But if you want to see some of my other photo books that I've critiqued, go ahead and check out my channel. You can go ahead and go to the channel down below and even subscribe to see future upcoming ones that I will talk about. But for now, this was Yamaguchi Maho's photo book and next time let's see which photo book I cover.